Hi, this is Mrs McTaggart and this is my fourth video on indices. Before you watch this, you really need to make sure that you understand all the previous rules of multiplying indices, dividing indices, negative powers, raising powers to power and the power zero. So this fundamentally is the final rule, fractional powers. Now, I always like to prove the rule rather than just jump in and say, this is the rule and this is what you do. So to prove this rule, this is the only way I can think of doing this one. So if you had a to the power of half times a to the power of half, you would add those powers, yeah? So we would do a half add a half, which is just one. Excuse me. So that would give you a to the power of one. But of course, we don't write that. We just read that as a. Now, root a times root a is a wee bit like writing root a all squared. Now, the square root and squaring are the inverse of each other, so they cancel out. It's a wee bit like me telling you to do 2 times 3 and then to divide it by 2. These cancel each other out. So the square root and the square cancel each other out and just becomes a. And if you've already done thirds before this topic, you should be aware that maybe root 3 times root 3 is just root 9, which is still just 3. So the square roots disappear. Now, if both of these questions give you the answer of a, and the only difference in these is that this one I've given you a square root in front and this one I've given you a power of half, then it's safe to say that a to the power of half can also be written as the square root of a. All right? Now, the square root of a looks like that, but what you didn't know is that there's secretly wee number two in the front of there, which we don't write. And if the square root of a looks like that, well, what does the cube root of a look like? Well, the, we should know from maths that the cube root of a looks like this. So if the power of half is the square root, what's the cube root? That's right. That's a to the power of a third. So let's go look at the formula. So for rule six, as I call it, if you have a fractional power, you can rewrite it like this nasty looking thing here. Please don't let you put it off. It's not that bad, okay? So what this says is it says it's the nth root of a. Now, I've got a little mantra here. So my tip in purple writing. The bottom becomes the root, the top stays put. We all know there's all these silly little things that teachers tell you that help you remember things. And I definitely hope this helps because pupils get really confused about, oh, which one becomes the root and which one's the power. So the bottom becomes the root, the top stays put. Other teachers use things like, um, if you think of a fraction, if you think of a fraction as being M over N, think of this as the top and this is the trousers. And some teachers will say, oh, take the trousers off. It's the trousers that come off first. Whatever works for you. But basically, that M is staying stationary. That is going nowhere, right? It's the bottom that's moving off. So I like my wee rhyme about the bottom becomes the root, the top stays put. And then obviously, we've already mentioned these in the previous slide. It's really worth just memorising that a to the power of half can be written as a square root really quickly. a to the third is a cube root and so on. A power of quarter would be a fourth root as well. And remembering them also helps you remember which one that's moving because obviously the one is a wee secret power in there that's never really written. So let's go look at examples, okay? Okay, so what we're going to do in these ones is we're just going to rewrite these in like the alternate form. So here is my power. I've got m to the power 3 over 2. So remember the bottom becomes the root. So this would be written as the square root m cubed. So I said a couple of things in the previous slide. I said the top stays on, so the 3 stays where it is, and it's the 2 that travels. However, we don't really write the square root of the wee 2 in front. We just write it as the square root of m cubed. In reverse, if you're presented with one like this, it says the fourth root of p to the power of 5. Remember that p to 5 stays unchanged. The 4 becomes the bottom. So that was the bottom that moved over or the trousers that came off, if you want to think of it that way. So that would be written as the power of 5 over 4. And if you remember things like the fourth root is a quarter, then, oh, that's just five quarters. And then what actually happens is something in an exam, they give you a number to evaluate without a calculator. Now, I don't know about you, I cannot do that written like that. I cannot do 64 to the power of two thirds without rewriting it. So remember, the bottom became the root. So the three comes to the front and becomes the root. And then this stays as 64 squared. Now, sometimes there's, there's an easy way and a hard way to go about this. I cannot do 64 squared very quickly without a calculator. So 
I can do the cube root of 64 though. So I'm going to do the cube root of 64 first. Now the cube root of 64 I know is 4 times 4 times 4. And if you don't know it, then, you know, you just work your way up and you go, right, 2 cubed is 8, it's not that. 3 cubed is 27, it's not that. 4 cubed, 4, 60, oh, it's 64. So the cube root of 64 is 4. So this sum just becomes 4 squared, which we all know is 16. So the final answer is 16. On my second one, we're going to do the same again. So we've got 32, the bottom becomes a root. So we've got the fifth root of 32 all cubed. And again, I can't do 32 cubed, but I'm hoping I can do the fifth root of 32. It might not be most obvious, but do what I did in the last one. Start with 2. 2 to the power of 5 is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Oh, there we go. The fifth root of 32 is 2. So we're left with 2 cubed which is just a. So there's always a way around it and generally it's taking the root first and then squaring it or cubing it at the end. But you do need to be really good at your square and cube numbers. And remember, we're only ever probably going to ask you as high as five cubed, okay? So let's go do some actual sums that involve fractions. So this is taken in your previous rules of multiplying indices. So we know when we multiply indices, we add these powers. So we've got a, to squ a squared times a to the power of half. Now, it's dead easy to turn around and say that's a to the power of two and a half. <sighs> we don't like that, though. Like, this looks terrible. As a maths teacher, there's nothing worse than seeing someone write a to the power of two and a half. Similarly, you could also write a to the power of 2.5. That's slightly better, but mathematically, as a maths teacher, it's just not nice, okay? So what you do in this one is you need to think of turn them all into halves. And if you struggle with fractions, we'll just think, well, two full cakes would be like having four halves in front of me and rewrite it like this or go do the fraction work at the side of your page. So we end up with four halves add one half, which is a to the five halves. Or similarly, when you had your two and a half, you could just go and do the wee sum to make that top heavy. Two times two is four, add one is five and think of it as like that but we really like to see it as top-heavy fractions or improper fractions, if possible. On this one, remember, this b has a wee secret power of 1 on it. So on this sum, we've got 2 times b, so we've got 2b, and then we've got 1 plus a third. So remember, think of your 1 as being 3 thirds plus 1 third, and it's okay to go do that at the side. 3 thirds plus 1 third is 4 thirds. So we've got 2b to power 4 thirds for our answer on that one. Now, I'll be honest, fractional indices don't often come up as hard as this anyway, but if you're going to do higher, you really need to be able to do these. So why not ace it just now? Right, now we've got a divide. So we've got a secret power of one. So I'm going to just stick that in. So a dividing rule was subtracting the powers. So four divided by two is two. And then we've got four thirds take away one. Well, that's the same as having four thirds take away three thirds, which just leaves me with one third. On my second one, uh, 4 divided by 6 doesn't go, but it does simplify. Half them both gives you 2 thirds. And then we've got 1 half minus 3 halves. So 1 half minus 3 halves gives me negative 2 halves. Now negative 2 halves is just negative 1. So remember, it's okay to go do all this kind of fraction work down the bottom, out the road. Um, so I've got 2 thirds d to negative 1, but remember... This question probably could have said leave it using positive indices. So this would become 2 over, the d comes below and it turns into a positive 1, but we don't write the 1 for a power. So there is your final answer for that one. Now that is getting tricky, okay? But it's assumed that you can do this when you get to higher maths, okay? And then my last one, a wee bracket one. So now I've covered it all. I can do ones with fractions and brackets and I can include all the rules now. So if I times this out, I've got a to the power, 2 plus a half is 2 and a half. Now remember, my logic is I turn that 2 into 4 halves, so I think, oh, that's really 4 halves there. So I've got a to the power of 5 halves. Take away, 1 half minus 1 half is just 0. And there's that wee sneaky power 0 rule coming in again. Anything to the power of 0 equals 1. So there is my final answer. So just a quick reminder on this one, I did say you do need to know your cube numbers, but it's sometimes handy to know 2 to the power of 4, 2 to the power of 5 and so on. And if I was teaching this in class, I'd probably leave this up to help people. So I hope this has helped. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.